Beatles 65, right now on States and Kingdoms. Welcome back, everybody. Today we're talking about Beatles 65, part of our mini-series of... That we didn't even know we were doing. <laughs> American versions versus British versions. Sort of, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. I don't know. It's kind of an interesting topic. Well, yeah, because we, we talked about Rubber Soul, which we really hadn't thought of doing, you know, talking about some of the Capitol releases. Right. And um, in that, we mentioned... Beatles 65, and there are obviously a couple others um, that we will talk about too. But, the, the, you know, it's kind of the same conversation over and over again. And, that's okay. But that's, yeah, that's all right. That's fine. Because, you know, we do that. We talk about the same thing over and over Everyone again. Everyone on YouTube does that. YouTube? What's that? I'm, talk I'm talking to them. They know what I'm talking about. I'm on TV? <laughs> um, Say hello. <laughs> tens of people, yeah. I know. Um, no, the, the, uh, <laughs> Beatles 65 actually is the only American release that I knew of before, you know, uh, just reading about the Beatles more. Be basically, mom was a fan. Yeah. Mom yeah. really loved this album. I, I remember, I yeah. I think it was and, her favorite. And yesterday and today, I remember that, that title also very early. I think this was her favorite album. This uh, probably Rubber Soul and maybe the White Album, yeah, were actually were her her favorites, um, which means of course the American version of Rubber Soul, and the uh, the Indian version of the White <laughs> yeah. Album, the Port the Puerto Rican version is in <laughs> Spanish, um, but uh, Hola, go ahead, go, I mean, <laughs> this is like a fabled American Beatles release, and uh, yeah, in our family. Right. But actually, that's the, that's kind of the interesting thing, because I've always loved Beatles for Sale. Yeah, me too. That's That was always, like, my, my favorite period for the Beatles. It was, you know, they were all together, you know, they um, just making great rock and roll, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, so I just love that period. Beatles for Sale is awesome. I, I love that album, and it, it feels like just a great rock and roll band. Yeah. You know? Uh, I mean, they're... they're you know, you hear Bob Dylan's influence, you hear things kind of coming, but it's still just this great rock and roll band. Yeah, because they're like, they're reaching you know, doing pa like into covers, the past, doing, yeah. yeah, like pulling from their, you know, song catalog that they played a billion times. And they're also, you know, have like the more forward reaching songs that, you yeah. know, are like looking toward their Bob Dylan stuff. But you don't have the... to get too ca caught up in that. It's just, it's just a really it's enjoyable a fun album. album. It's yeah. a really fun album. So, I, you know, I, I love that album. And this album just always seemed like less of that. I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's, in a lot of ways, it's what it is. But, you know, listening to it somewhat more critically recently, thinking about how people heard this then, thinking about, you know, how mom loved this album. And, I mean, dad did too. Yeah. Even though he's he won't admit it and he's moved right. on to greener pastures. Yeah. British releases only. Yeah. I, it's, I still prefer Beatles for Sale. I mean, I prefer the British releases, really, for, for everything. I, I don't have the connection to these albums. But well, there obviously. is that one thing... That keeps that, it interesting. That makes it really kind of fascinating, which is all the American musicians who heard these. You know, I mean, when you, you listen to... I mean, just, you know, take your pick. Yeah. Any American musician talking about, you know, the Beatles and their influence or how much they love their records or whatever... It's one of these albums. Yeah. Unless they were in England. And and even for, you know, for Brian, it likely, you know, who you would think had access to the British albums, it seems like it was it the was still the American version. releases. Yeah. No, that is what makes Americans it Americans will buy anything with no that... questions asked. <laughs> so there, there's something here. There's something here to discuss. I want to unpack this. The, the question is, um, you know, is there something on this as opposed to Beatles for Sale because Beatles for Sale has never been terribly highly regarded people don't regard it highly they don't um, but so many Americans love this album it was a huge success I mean everything they did was a success yeah hello it's say the, that again it's the flipping Beatles yeah I mean everything was a success for them at the time but still it was a huge success you know it's a massive album you hear people talk about it mm -hmm. you know older people 
And <laughs> what is the different? The great generation. What is different, you know, from Beatles for Sale, you know, to, to Beatles 65? Um, I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> The cover is different. It's, 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 it, <laughs> the I cover mean, is surely different. It is really just, it's interesting. I can't. Well, so the first side is almost exactly the same. Identical. Identical. Except for Kansas City. Except for Kansas City. Hey. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey. Which is not on this. Right. Um, so it goes, no reply. I'm a loser. Babies in black. Rock and roll music. I'll follow the sun, Mr. Moonlight. Right. I read that. I know. I, I didn't have tell. it up in the noodle. I read it. I read it on. You know, great side one. Um, I love uh, No Reply, I'm a Loser, and, and Babies in Black. Babies in Black is, I don't know, it's one of my, always been one of my favorite uh, Beatles songs. Yeah. Just an op- three opening songs that are just, you know, flat out awesome. Yep. Then, rock and, yeah, yeah, then rock more, and roll music is a great. Great One cover. of the greatest covers, you know, the Beatles were incredible covering other people's songs. We talked about this at nauseum. Um, so, I, you know, I love this cover. It's it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'll follow the I'll sun. I'll follow the sun is is a, is a really great song. A very interesting song, and so immediately this this album does have Newness. a kind of acoustic ish, somewhat folky bent. Mm-hmm. Then Mr. Moonlight, which people really don't like. People don't like Mr. Moonlight. I think it's such a fun song. Well, I like, you know, I like what I like about it. One is John singing, which which is always fun to listen to. Yes. It's a really faithful cover. Um, so if you don't like the original song, then you don't like the original song. You don't right. you don't like this. So don't listen to it. <laughs> it but it, you know, so John's uh, voice is, is so I know, fierce I don't have on much. The, yeah. But this is what this is the Beatles like pedigree. You know, and all the that's and that's one of the things I always loved about Beatles for Sale. And it's still here, but it is definitely it shows pared their down. Roots. Yeah. This is yeah. what this is what everything's built upon. This is right. you know, the their bring together of, of music, their little thoroughfare of music. That's, and that's, that's really what's, what they did. You know, so interesting, you know, and, and makes a lot of these albums, especially the earlier albums. Right. You know, so wonderful to listen to. It's like the it's almost you know, it's like the first five Gene Vincent records when he's doing all the old standards in like a rock and roll style. And, yeah. You know, it's awesome to hear and, and that's in them too, obviously. Anyway, so after Mr. Moonlight, which I like, I know it's not my favorite song of all time, but I like it. It's my favorite song of all time. Yeah, it would be. So in side two, you go Honey Don't, right. which is on... So, so this is the thing. So this is the thing. This is this is the... This is How where I do the hand gesture and this sense. is where things change. Side two is all over the place compared to, to uh, Beatles for Sale. There's only two songs on side two that are right. on the original Beatles for Sale. Now, Beatles for Sale has 14 songs, six of which are covers. This has 11 songs, and three of them are covers. Is that right? Four of them are covers, sorry. Four of them are covers. Four of them. Um, now, you know, that does make a little bit... I mean, it's a shorter album. And proportionally, it's kind of like the, the same, but... but right. It does maybe seem a little bit more of a Beatles original album because of that. Somehow it does. Um, not having Kansas City on here, I obviously really miss a couple of those songs. Um, and I'm not, you know, I want to buy Beatles 6 just to hear them. We already have Beatles for sale. We might buy Beatles 6. No, I know, we don't have that. But, um... Don't tell them. No. We have it. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, just got it. There it is. So the three songs that I really miss from Beatles for Sale are Every Little Thing, which I love. Love, love. Like, that's one of my favorite Beatles songs. I Don't Want to Spoil the Party, which is an awesome song. One of my first memories was that song, actually. And What You're Doing, which is also an awesome song. Mm-hmm. So... But this is, this is all. This is, this is really the crux of the conversation. I love Side 2 of Beatles for Sale. I, I love all those songs. I, I really do. They're, they're all wonderful. Words of love. I love Buddy Holly's version. I love the Beatles version. And with the Side 2 of Beatles 65 is so, so pared down. And all the songs are great. I mean, you have two great Carl Perkin covers. 
you have, you know, I, I feel fine and, and uh, I was say I feel pretty. I feel fine and uh, what do the simple folk she's do? I feel fine and she's a woman. Yeah. O- awesome, like awesome help. songs. Yeah. They don't fit for me, but clearly they fit for everyone else when they heard this. That's so funny. And um, eight days a week. Well, yeah, it's like, yeah. Yeah. And I'll Be Back, which is one of my favorite Beatles songs and uh, a perfect close to Hard Day's Night. Also strange for me to see it here. But that's the thing. How This works. It does. And it, and it, it's, it also, it just solidified to the American audience the Beatles' awesomeness. And when you think about the fact that, that so many people, most people, were influenced by yeah. albums that the Beatles didn't even specifically intend to release right. in this in these formats. It's just it, it's almost like what it what how is it just because the songs are just that good anyway, like any of them? Well y- or did like know, yes, did, did, but- did Capital stumble upon something each time? maybe uh, when it works the the tr- because we, we've talked about track list before and it's a, it is really an interesting thing you know uh, we, when we talked about way back when about Soundgarden yeah down, about, on, the upside. down on the upside and we we're saying that really it seemed like the the listing of the songs was kind of off like skewed. they could have you know that they're, they're um, blow up the outside world and and uh, burn, in burn in my, my hand. hand or back to back, back. Yeah. and it's like those shouldn't be that back to always, back. Always, always bothered me. You know, like a, an album can be marred by that. So it is really interesting because this different order, and obviously there's more than just that, but you know, Rubber Soul as well. Yeah. Had a different impact, and what was its influence? What was the difference? Right. I know. You know, I don't know exactly. That's what's so. Yeah. That's what. Is, I mean that's I what I mean, saying. It's fascinating because I find this could tell us this really fascinating. Leave comments. Nice ones. Nice ones. <laughs> There's still something interesting to get at. There's something interesting in 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 all of this, and you know, Beale sixty five is special because it was special to to our mom, and you know, I I enjoy listening to these because it really is. It's just like looking at. The Beatles record from another perspective, and you know nothing can nothing can damage these albums. That's the thing. Yeah. I mean, nothing can actually you know nothing can harm the music. I prefer Beatles for sale. Yeah, uh, for sure. Without any question, but um, yeah, I um, I don't know what to say. I, I'm still trying to. I'm still trying to. You know, there's it's no, uh, it's, it's really it's, interesting. It's a conversation that. I think this is the kind of thing that you and I would be talking about anyway. Yeah. Um, because we're always talking about music and the Beatles are just a, a thing in our family. Um, like I'm sure in a lot of other people's families. Or a, not. A thing to fight about. <laughs> yeah. A thing to not talk to, to each other about. So, the, yeah, I think this is just something that I, uh, I've always been interested in for years and years listening to the Beatles and reading about the Beatles and, yeah. you know, just digging into the whole phenomenon aspect of it. Of course, the music is the, the main point. So mm-hmm. thank you so much for watching our discussion of Beatles 65. Please let us know what you think in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe and please stay tuned here at Stacey Kingdoms for more videos every Wednesday and Friday. We'll see you next time.